Hi, hello, and welcome everyone. It is Andrew from IGB here with Spring to Mize 4, which got a major refresh for iOS 10. With over a hundred different things that you can change with Spring to Mize, this is just a great update, including a big major new feature, which I personally absolutely love, and we're gonna get to right at the end of this video, so we're gonna save the best for last. You can see some of the cool things that we've done here with Spring to Mize, you know, removing things, adding extra icons to the dock, changing labels, adding background colors to notification center and control center. So we're going to get to see all of that and more. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into the settings application and look at actually what we can do with Spring to Mize 4. So if you've used any of the past Spring to Mize, this is all automatically going to look pretty familiar. So obviously up top, we have that option to respring and to enable or disable Spring to Mize. So that's, that's great. Then we have all these different categories, such as animations where you can choose a custom speed to kind of really speed up all the animations on my phone. All your kind of popping and pulling, you can change the screenshot color. Normally it's that white, but now when you do a screenshot, you can see there it changed to red. So kind of small little thing you can change. One of the more drastic things you can change is the animation going between pages. You can see here we have this kind of cube effect going on. Every time we jump in, we can keep changing until we find what we like, because there is a ton of options. Sea size, a little subtle one, where's a little bit of a wave as they kind of going through. It's kind of a neat little one if you don't want anything too nuts. Um, what other ones we have spread, also kind of cool. A lot of these just look cool. It's cool little animations, but they can be a little bit annoying if you just have to keep doing it if you have a lot of pages going on. So these are definitely better maybe if you have something, you know, only a couple pages on your phone so you don't have to just keep doing this because it's going to make your kind of head spin. Uh, speaking of spinning, how about the windmill effect? It also kind of looks cool. Either way, there are plenty of different options for animations inside of Spring to Minus 4. The app switch are really cool here. So first off, you can hide the icons, which just makes it a little bit cleaner. So when you double tap to go into the app switcher, you'll notice those icons are gone along the top. You can also change the resize. So you can actually make them a little bit bigger than they are now because they're a little bit smaller, especially if you get rid of that icon, you can boost that size a little bit. You'll also notice how a lot of these are darkened out or kind of you know shaded a little bit. That's that bottom option, which I'll put the inactive apps as darkened. You can also opt to have it respring when you swipe up on the home screen, that first option. Control Center, this is a really easy way to kind of change or hide a lot of the options here, which is your main feature. You can obviously add a background color, as you saw here, um, but you can also hide things. You can hide the toggles and the brightness. You can turn off um, the airdrop or airplay part, night shift, quick action. You can also hide any of those launch items on the bottom. So you dropping them out just automatically kind of space everything out to have those uh, icons missing. Inside of the dock, you have two big options here, which can be hide the dock, just hide it completely, you don't have it. You can also hide the background so it doesn't have that shading behind it. We also have folders. Nested folders is one of my favorite ones. Being able to put folders inside of folders, keep everything really clean. Locking folder names so you can't change them. Pinch to close, another favorite. Just being able to pinch on a folder to close it instead of having uh, to actually hit the home button to go back. Also, you can set that custom background and fast open close. That's another little one that I like just to speed things along. So icons here, that's our next category. This is a big one. We have several subcategories such as the dock setting. So we can resize those icons. Do we make them bigger or do we want them smaller? We're gonna put more icons in there. You know, I wanna hide the labels and increase the, the amount of icons to six. I wanna decrease that size to like 85, 95%. I also really love the option for cover flow. Uh, we can enable that. You notice the dock has that kind of cover flow effect to it. You can also invert it so it's kind of in the opposite direction. So the bigger ones are in the middle instead of on the edges. I don't know why, especially on the dock, it's just kind of a thing that I like to see. So compared to this standard, just flat across look. You can also change the factor and the perspective on those two. Really beefing it up if you really want to see something more drastic than it is kind of in the stock option. See, it's a lot more curved now than it would be in the past. So aside from dock options, our next option down for inside of icons is the folder settings. They're different than the folder settings we looked at in the past. But then we also have page settings. We can resize the pages or at least the icons on those pages. Um, we can add horizontal padding. We can enable color cover flow. Just like we did on the dock, you can now do it on the actual icons on the pages. Kind of a cool little neat thing. If you do like the cover flow on the dock, you might like it on the pages. Of course, it can be inverted as well. Same option we had before. You can change the perspective and the factor uh, like in the dock. So other than that, we have just the main icon settings. So you can sort things alphabetically. Just put your al apps in alphabetical order. Disabling uninstall, disabling the wiggle edit mode, hiding badge text, hiding badges in general, or maybe keeping the badges and putting a different color on there, changing the background color, uh, icon image effects, kind of making them more pronounced. Either way, let's move on to lock screen. 
these are there's a few options for the lock screen you can hide things like the camera notification center we're now playing from showing up you can change that label that appears on the bottom it always just says like you know press to unlock you can change that to some custom text i have in andrew's iphone or you can just hide it completely or put something else i like enabling the time color so just kind of matching your theme is that time on the front i had it red kind of at the beginning you saw and we'll see it again here at the end and a few other options for the time notification center you can disable it completely if it's something that you don't use you can change the background color like many other places uh, i do like the background color in notification center that's a little small one that i like being able just to jump that through you know maybe you want a green or blue or pink whatever you want to make it really easy to change that and you can also change kind of the opacity of that as well so i can bump it all the way up and now we have a lot more solid color so you like that solid color um, works probably fine colors are a lot more vivid or you can drop that all the way down a little more opaque a little bit more subtle so it just kind of matches your theme a little bit more um, and it looks better in applications to kind of pull whatever theme you're going for all together other than that you can change the font size hide the today and hide the today view we have pages next it allows you to hide the dots on the pages disabling spotlight disabling search returning to the first page every time you kind of go into a folder and preventing the rotation so if you're on the larger phones and you don't like it being able to rotate easy way just to knock that out and here's one that i definitely use which is status bar first up i have a custom carrier which you can't see because i'm doing a screen recording but it replaces the carrier up there uh, with idb just a little thing that i like to do so you can change that custom carrier you can do things to the time mode so instead of displaying the time you can do custom text instead or you can put your ip address your wi-fi that you're connected to or just lowering case lower casing the am pm other than that you have options to disable literally everything that is in that status bar so there's something that you don't like seeing like maybe you have bluetooth all the all all the way on all the time and you just want to turn it off so you don't see that icon there really easy to do for someone who likes everything minimal and clean this is definitely a part of the app that you'll like okay so now the big new feature which is profiles this allows you to save a set of changes and then jump between them it's i love this it's so easy because you don't want to get stuck on something but maybe you want to change it you like sometimes minimal, sometimes kind of crazy. Um, every time you do change, it's a little disappointing, but you have to respring just because there's so many things going on. So I'm gonna go from all out over here to my default one. I'm gonna swipe up on my home screen, which is a setting that I put in, so it'll respring when I swipe up on the home screen inside of App Switcher. When my, re when my device resprings, I'm now back to the default. So everything that I had done is completely gone. I have no more icons in my dock, my labels are back, my icons are bigger. Everything's kind of back to how it was. Jump through all the hoops, go into settings, go down to Spring to My Four, scroll down to Profiles, and now I can opt to change again. So instead of default, I want to go to my minimalism one. This is super clean, hiding labels, smaller icons, everything like that. Again, just swipe up on that home screen to respring, and then once it reboots, I am now not reboots but resprings. I'm back onto my minimalism one. So a lot cleaner, smaller icons. Even though it does put six spots back in my dock, it takes them out. So if I want to put Activator and I want to put Workflow back in there, I do have to actually go ahead and add them. So it's kind of a small, uh, annoying thing, but really what's it going to do? I mean, it's it's kind of just changing the number of things that are there, but something easy that I can quickly fix. And of course, we can switch to my All Out one, which is just kind of the much more drastic change that I did, like adding cover flow into places, changing the color on like my my clock here so i'm doing like a kind of a red theme i would probably rather change my background i got cover flow i got this you know cool animation effect as i'm swiping between the different pages that i've got going on cleaned up my status bar a little bit so just really easy way i absolutely love profiles those are probably one of the best things about spring to minus four so that is it that is spring to minus four a whole lot of stuff that we went over today is available for the first week at 399 other than that it'll jump back up to 499 but if you've already purchased a previous version, you can actually just upgrade for only $1.99. So Spring to My Sport is out now. Definitely go check it out and let us know what you guys think down in the comments below. What are your favorite changes that you can do with Spring to My Sport? Elsewise, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time, this is Andrew for IDV.